part. Yes, it, uh, it is important, of course, because they need it, don't they, in order to get back down? Well, I've got three of them, and there, there's three for a purpose. Any two could fail, and they could still activate the uh, body flaps, the control surfaces, and the landing gear to get back home. Well, this mission, of course, will be notable because uh, there will be uh, something uh, very important uh, attempted or demonstrated during this mission, the ability to uh, not only open the doors, but actually to use the arm, the Canada arm, it's called, and there you see uh, an animation of it. Uh, it is uh, sort of a long 50-foot uh, metal arm. It has a shoulder, an elbow, a wrist, and a hand of uh, several uh, wire-type uh, contraptions that actually are able to grasp certain objects in space or to lift objects from the uh, cargo bay out into space. So uh, that will be tested this time. They won't actually do any grabbing or any lifting, but they will uh, open the, uh, the uh, cargo bay doors and extend the, uh, the arm out to see how it works. Lynn Scher has prepared a report on just how important that is. It comes to us from Canada. Oh, I'm sorry, she hasn't prepared a report. She's standing right there now with a man who's had a great deal to do with it. And she's on live. Go ahead, Lynn. Thanks, Frank. I am here with uh, John Roberts. He is the Minister for Science and Technology from Canada. And he is the man who's been responsible for getting this arm made in Canada. Mr. Roberts, what are you going to be doing tomorrow somewhere between 7 and 8 a.m.? I'm going to be watching on television when the Canada arm, the remote, remote uh, manipulator system, is unsheathed and used on the shuttle for the first time. Could we say that you're going to be watching with a little anxiety and a little bit of pride? What do you think the feelings are going to be? Mainly pride. Uh, slightly cross fingers to make sure everything goes all right. It's met the specifications so we know it's okay. But uh, there's still a bit of doubt as to how the vibration of takeoff may affect it. But we're pretty sure it'll be okay. You are then confident that, every, that there will be no need to jettison at the end, that everything will work all right with it? 99 and 44, 100 percent sure. Dick truly said one of the things he was looking forward to uh, was operating that arm in near-zero gravity out in space because it's been very different here on Earth. He said it would be fun. Do you think he'll have fun with it? I think it'll be a little bit like a kid with an erector set. Uh, uh, that, that magnificent arm will be out there. It'll, television cameras will be attached to it to be able to look at the outside skin of the spacecraft, check the tiles. I think it's going to be a wonderful morning. What have been your thoughts during this, uh, the, the, the one-week scrub, and then today we didn't quite know there towards the end? Did you have some anxiety? Well, it heightens the excitement, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> adds a little bit of tension to it. Did you ever think that the shuttle might not be able to take off because of the weight of the arm that had been brought up? No, the arm uh, weighs uh, about 900 pounds. Uh, it can lift the whole uh, railway boxcar weight once it's in space. But I don't think that the weight of the arm is, is, has ever been a great uh, problem. No, no, no worries on that, on that score. Politically, what does this do to U.S.-Canadian relations, having that arm going up in this craft? Oh, I think it's a help. There, there are two things that are really important to us uh, about this. One is the use of Canadian technology, uh, the world's best in this kind of thing. And secondly, it's an example of cooperation between two countries in the space field. And I think that that's an important thing, too. I hope it strengthens Canadian-American relations. They're pretty strong already. It strengthens them thir further. Well, tomorrow morning, good luck to you. Good luck to the arm. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Mr. Roberts. Frank? Thank you, Lynn. It's a $100 million arm, and the Canadians have given it to us this time around, uh, although I understand that NASA's going to pay for the others that will come up. Here's a replay of the launch that uh, took place 24 minutes and uh, 20 seconds ago. For those of you who missed it, this is a recording, a replay of the launch. An absolutely flawless launch, too. Watch the uh, rollover now. Frank, this, uh, this launch is actually governed uh, by computers on board the spacecraft, although the astronauts can take over manually if they have to. Contrary to a broad misconception that exists even during uh, Gemini and Apollo, the astronauts are not passengers. Once they get in orbit, they, they are the controllers of the spacecraft. Uh, they're assisted greatly by, uh, by the information from Houston, but they are truly pilots of that spacecraft. Well, we had some spectacular shots, and here now is the map of uh, the astronauts are in orbit and they're passing over, uh, it appears to me, Algeria. They'll be going over Libya, the Sudan, and Ethiopia very shortly. And uh, we'll continue with our coverage of the flight of the space shuttle after this message and a word from our local stations.
Smucker's grape jelly your favorite? Naturally. Did you know that Smucker's has no artificial ingredients? Naturally. Did you know Smucker's has great-tasting apricots? And red raspberry. And orange marmalade. And strawberry. Naturally. <laughs> Smucker's is naturally good because it's naturally made. No preservatives, artificial flavoring, or coloring. So naturally, Smucker's is America's favorite. Do you think with a name like Smucker's, it has to be good? Of course. The only serious solution to indoor air pollution, Ecologizer CA-90 air treatment systems. The unique CA-90 natural cleansing system is scientifically superior to anything else. It removes tobacco smoke, odors, dust and pollen from the air continuously. Ecologizer CA-90 air treatment systems for home, office, and auto. Anything else is less. Music lives on TV. sweater girls. Cool Sweaters salutes them. And America's sweater girls have never looked better. And you're one of them. You've made sweater dressing a way of life. You make Gould Sweaters look fabulous. And P.S. Gould knits every stitch in the USA. After all, we think America's sweater girls should be able to wear sweaters made in America. Hooray, it's pure Gould. Available at Lord & Taylor. Arcade, a new video computer system that gives you more than Atari or Intellivision. Arcade gives you four-player capability and an incredible 256 colors. Arcade has features the others don't. A built-in music synthesizer, three built-in games, a calculator, and Valley Basic, making the Arcade a personal home computer. Arcade, the home entertainment sensation. WABC-TV, New York. Reach into space. ABC News live coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia continues. From the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Frank Reynolds. And good morning once again. Well, the garage has been empty for about uh, 28 and a half minutes. The bird has flown. And fly she did as Columbia lifted off at about 10.10 Eastern Time this morning. We want to show you, those of you who may have missed it, and those of you who'd like to see it again, another replay of the launch from the moment of ignition when that uh, great flame and smoke burst out, and here it is. From the other direction. Different shot. No, there it goes. Here's the liquid rockets. Yes. They're up to speed. And there come the solid rockets, and she's on the way. And you know that's an exciting moment. <laughs> it sure doesn't wait. From ignition to clearing the uh, tower is only about six seconds or so. About six and a half yeah. seconds, and that's a very critical time. Uh, in Apollo, I remember, it took us over 15 seconds, and although we had a more powerful engine, we moved very much more Oh, slowly. and it always seemed to wobble, you know. Well, like you a telephone if pole. it was ever going to get up there, you yeah. know. It almost looks sometimes like it will fall over. You don't get the chance uh, with this one because it moves out so quickly. But this is a, uh, it's a totally different configuration, and that's why it's so different to see it uh, lifting off that way, you know, with the solid rocket boosters and, of course, that huge external tank that it's all uh, made into. It's, it's, it's more the kind of thing, we're, we're familiar with seeing airplanes, and we're beginning to see something, I think all of us out there, uh, seeing something we can more closely identify with. Apollo, a long, big booster with something from outer space. Now I think yeah. everyone can associate with, with the shuttle far more closely than they could with, the, with Apollo. And we'll see it come down, of course, uh, on Tuesday out there in the uh, desert in uh, California. 
at uh, Edwards Air Force Base, where so many of these pilots have spent so many years training and working so very hard to prepare themselves for missions like this. And it was from Edwards, I guess, too, that uh, Joe Engel actually flew the uh, X-15, wasn't it? Joe has been in space uh, 16 times, so he has his astronaut wings, but I'll tell you, he's, he's re-earning his wings out there today.